Hey, what's up everybody? Moving on with capital structure, we're going to do an example. In this example, what we're going to do is uh, combine the concepts of break even, EBIT, and the M&M propositions that we went over. Now, if you didn't go through those videos before, highly recommend you do so, especially the one when we talked about break even EBIT at first, because in this video, I'm going to be going through the concept a little bit more quickly. In that intro video, I go through it in a lot more depth. So I'd recommend watching that video first if you haven't so before getting into this one. So let's see what we're dealing with here in this question. So we have a firm and it's comparing two capital structure plans. Plan one has 90,000 in debt and 4,000 shares of stock. Plan two has 153,000 in debt and 26,000 shares. Interest on debt is 8%. We are ignoring taxes. Two parts to this question. What is the break even EBIT? And then part B, what is the share price under both plans? So starting off with part A, what is the break even EBIT? Now, just a, as a heads up, this can be worded in different ways. So they can also be asking you, when will the EPS be identical? Because remember, this break even EBIT happens when we make the earnings per share equal under two different capital structure plans. So just be aware that the wording can be different for these questions. So the first thing is let's create balance sheets for both of these plans. So starting with plan one, it has $90,000 worth of debt and then 4,000 shares of stock. So we're not given the value of the equity, <clears throat> but we are told that there are going to be 4,000 shares and we are not given any information about the assets. Plan two, 153,000 in debt. So this is gonna be 153,000. And then there are 2,600 shares here. So again, no dollar amounts of equity, but we are given the number of shares and then no information about the assets. So we're looking for the break even EBIT. How do we do that? Well, we have to find an expression for the earnings per share under both plans. And if you remember, when we introduced break-even EBIT, we said the earnings per share is the net income over the number of shares, but then we broke down that net income into this formula, earnings before interest and taxes minus interest times one minus T, all over the number of shares right so this numerator here earnings before interest and taxes minus interest and then taking that after tax amount that's whole expression is basically the net income and notice that we are ignoring taxes in this question so we can forget about this one minus t and even if there were taxes you can still forget about that one minus t because when you're doing the break even calculation and you're making two expressions equal to each other, that one minus T will cancel out. It's gonna be the same on both sides because the firm is still the same. It's still gonna be in that same tax bracket. So whenever you're dealing with break even EBIT, you can always forget about this one minus T. Now this is not the actual earnings per share formula because you do have to have that one minus T. So if this was like an accounting course, this would be incomplete. So this earnings per share formula only works or we only use for break even EBIT. You want to may want to make a um, note of that. So now what we have to do is we have to find an expression for the earnings per share under both plans. So let's start off with plan one. So we're going to find what's the expression for the earnings per share under plan one. Well, the EBIT, we don't know what that is, so let's just keep that as is. That's what we're actually gonna be solving for, the break even EBIT. And then we have to subtract the interest. How do we calculate the interest that we're gonna be paying under this plan? Well, we would take our debt and multiply it by the interest rate. Interest rate is given as 8%, so putting that in decimals we would end up getting 7,200. So we're gonna subtract that interest of 7,200, and then we are gonna divide it by the number of shares. And the number of shares under plan one is 4,000. 
Okay, so we have the earnings per share expression for plan one. What about the earnings per share expression for plan two? Well, it's going to be the earnings before interest and taxes. We don't know what that is. We are solving for that. And then we're going to subtract the interest that we're paying under plan two. The way we calculate that, like we did here, we take the debt, 153000 and then multiply it by the interest rate of 8%, so 0 0.08. That will give us 12,240. So that's how much interest we're paying under plan two. So we'll be subtracting $12,240. And then we're gonna divide it by the number of shares under plan two, which is 2,600. So now, we have expressions for the earnings per share under plan one and then the earnings per share under plan two. And to calculate the break even EBIT, we basically have to make those equal to each other. We have to find what EBIT figure will make both of those earnings per share figures equal. So writing that out, earnings per share under plan one equals earnings per share under plan two. That's what we have to solve for. So writing out those expressions, EBIT minus 7,200 divided by 4,000 has to equal EBIT minus 12,240 over 2,600. And we are solving for this EBIT here. And let's not write EBIT. Let's just put a variable here since it's the same on both sides. Let's put an X here. So we're going to be solving for that variable X and that will be our break even earnings before interest and taxes. That's what we're solving for in part A. Now, one thing that's a little bit different about this question versus other break even EBIT questions you usually get is usually you're comparing a unlevered plan to a levered plan. But notice how here we're comparing two different levered plans. Both of these plans have debt. So usually your equations are going to be X over number of shares equals X minus interest over number of shares. Because this plan usually here is going to be unlevered, so there's not going to be an interest portion. But in this case, it's two levered plans, and it's very possible that you can get questions like this as well. So... We have to uh, solve for this x, so what we do is we cross multiply. So 2,600 times this whole expression in brackets, make sure that you're putting it in brackets when you get to this step, has to equal 4,000 times this expression, and that expression goes in brackets. Make sure that you're always putting those brackets, it's crucial. And now to further solve for this x, what you do is you distribute this 2,600 inside this bracket and then 4,000 inside that bracket there. So when you do that, 2,600 times x gives us 2,600x. 2,600 times 7,200 gives us 18,720,000. There's still that negative there. Then we have 4,000x. 4, 4,000 times 12,240 gives us 48,960,000, and then that negative is still there as well. So now what we have to do is we have to take all the expressions with x, so these two, put them on one side, and then take all the numbers, put them on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all of the x variables on the right side, so I'm going to bring this over. So notice how it's positive here. When I bring it over, it becomes negative. And then this 48,960,000, it's negative. When I bring it over, it's going to be positive. And I'm going to be subtracting still this 18,720,000. So simplifying the left side, right side, 4,000 minus 2,600 gives us 1,400x. And then subtracting those two big numbers, we get 30,240,000 on the left side. And then to isolate for that x, we just simply divide both sides by 1,400. So notice how that will cancel out. And when you divide both of these numbers, you'll get x equaling 21,600. And that there is our final answer. That is your break-even EBIT. 
that is the earnings before interest and taxes that will make the earnings per share under both of these plans identical, equal. So what you do, again, make an expression for earnings per share under two plans. Remember, you could always forget about that one minus T, even if you are given a tax rate, the one minus T's will cancel out on both sides. So you make an expression, uh, sub in X for the EBIT, and then you just solve for that X, and then you get your final answer. And then for part B, what is the share price under both plans? So I started off this question by redrawing the balance sheet for both plans, just so we can see what's happening visually. And then notice with the equity, we're given the number of shares under each plan, but we're not given the share price, and that's what we're trying to figure out. So just in general, What's the value of a firm? Well, it's basically equal to the value of the assets. And the value of the assets we know is debt plus equity, right? Left side equals right side. So we can have debt plus equity. And then furthermore, we can break down this equity here as the number of shares times the price per share. <clears throat> so what we can do under both of these plans is create an expression for the value of the firm. It's gonna equal the debt plus the number of shares times the price per share. So the value of the firm under plan one is equal to the debt, which is 90,000, plus the number of shares here, which is 4,000, times the share price. And that's gonna be the share price under plan one. So that's the value of the firm under plan one, that's the expression, and then the value of the firm under plan two is gonna be same thing, debt, which is 153,000, plus the number of shares, which is 2,600, times the share price under plan. So now we have two expressions for the value of this firm under two different capital structure plans. However, if you remember M&M Proposition 1 in the no tax case, notice how we're ignoring taxes in this scenario, the value of any firm is always equal, no matter what capital structure plan you take. So notice how we don't have to differentiate V1, V2, we can just say that the value of the firm is either 90,000, sorry, this should be 90,000, not 9,000. So the value of a firm is either equal to 90,000 plus 4,000 times the share price under plan one, or 153,000 plus 2,600 times the share price under plan two. So both of these values are the same. These expressions have to equal. And if you remember, an implication of M&M Proposition 1 under the no tax case, if you look at the summary, the share price is always constant, no matter what the capital structure. So this share price is gonna be the same as this share price here. So we don't have to say share price one, share price two. We don't have to make a distinction between them. They are both the same thing. So if you think about it, this has to equal this, we can make these two expressions equal, and then the only variable left over to solve for is going to be this share price here. So notice how we use the M&M proposition one to create this equation here. We use the actual proposition that the value of the firm is always equal, no matter what the capital structure, and also that the share price is constant, no matter the capital structure. So now all we have to do is just solve this equation. And instead of share price, let's just put a variable x here, just so we can visually see it better. 
So we got 9,000 plus 4,000 X equals 153,000 plus 2,600 X. And what we can do, bring all the expressions with a variable over to the left side, bring all the numbers over to the right side. So we'd have 4,000 X minus 2,600 X, and that will equal 153,000 minus this 90,000 that we brought over. So we'll have 1,400 X equals, uh, this would be what, 63,000? Um, and then to isolate, for X, we divide both sides by 1,400. And when you do that in the calculator, you end up getting 45. So that there is the share price under both plans. So this question, uh, when you initially read it, you may think they're asking for two different share prices, under plan one, under plan two. But as we know with M&M Proposition 1, one of the implications was that if you're not dealing with any taxes, share price is always constant under any plan for the same firm. And notice how this is the same firm. We're just talking about two different capital structure plans for it. So making both of those values equal, keeping that share price constant, solving for X, you get the share price being $45 under both plans. That's your final answer.